I really want to understand that in the past, whenever you ran a campaign, either for yourself or for a company or something, uh, you may have used some logic before running the campaign in the planning stage, some hypothesis, something. And kuch aisa stories hain jo kaam bilkul nahi kiye. Like you thought of something else and kuch aur ho gaya. I mean, campaigns keep failing, right? More campaigns fail than campaigns doing well, right? So that is one. Uh, that like when I go on with a campaign, I go with a perspective that it's going to fail. And anything beyond failing is a positive for me, right? That's a mindset that I go with anything that I do. I go, uh, I go with a mindset that I'm okay to lose, right? That's, right. that's the mindset that I have usually, right? So the multiple campaigns, man, like, uh, I mean, back in the day for Uber, uh, when, uh, when we are doing some level of performance, uh, we tried to do pricing and in, pricing analysis in terms of point A to point B by trying to identify geolocations, right? Let's uh. say you are in uh, Kormangala. Right. right. And from Kor Mangla, a lot of people go to the airport on weekends. So we started to, you know, build a lookalike audience of people who have gone to airports before and started right. showing up ads in Kor Mangla saying from Kor Mangla to airport, this is the cost. And our right. activation rates shot up like crazy because uh, <laughs> you get my point, right? Audience size is very small. Audience size is not small. To be very, I'm, I'm giving you an example of Kor Mangla, but I'm, give, right. I'm, I'm giving you like uh, this was done in scale with multiple hotspots, okay. Okay. multiple, you know, geo filtering that we used. Right, right. right. And it didn't work out. But the hypothesis when you think about it, it's like this is bang on, right? Like right. the audience that you're catering to are people who have the spendability because they look like one person close look alike of these people. And uh, you are directly shooting them a creative saying that uh, uh, other cabs, 1,500 rupees, our Uber, 800 rupees, is extra 500 rupees off and everything. And you thought it will go crazy. It didn't work out. Right. right? Uh, to uh, something as basic as sometimes you think you want to go all by brand when you're doing something smaller. So in fact, when I was running my own ads for the, for the programs that I run and everything around it, my best performing ads, the shittiest looking creatives ever. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because uh, when you do a creative, which looks gorgeous and beautiful, yeah, they just don't work because it doesn't enable pattern interrupt, which is so important right now. Right. right. I've had people reaching me out saying, dude, why the fuck would you use pink color on your creative? Guess right. what? It's the best performing creative. I won't, I won't go by what you think is right or wrong. I would go by data, right? right, right. I'm a marketer. So the lot of times this, this is a bias that you always have saying a good looking creator will always work better. Surprisingly, right. it doesn't, right? Two, going to a landing page level where, uh, you know, I've had initial, my first landing page version was a beautiful looking landing page. And, you know, it looked like a proper fancy product that I was selling and the conversion of that improved by 11% the moment I switched it into a sales sales letter model. But again, I didn't go classic sales letter model because the sales model is long as text paragraphs and I, I'm not a fan of that. So I broke it right. down more of text, more of explaining uh, what it is and it skyrocketed the engagement. Uh, it skyrocketed right. uh, the retention on that page. The bounce rate reduced as a result, people started spending more time on the page as a result of the conversions improve. So a lot of times, right, um, especially when you're running campaigns, usually most of the campaigns fail. Uh, and at least even if they don't go with that mindset, don't yeah. with the mindset that, oh, I'm going to kill it with this campaign. When it doesn't happen, it's going to yeah. disappoint you more than, you know, you actually like end up uh, uh, enjoying it. But the, when, you, when you go with an approach that I'm going to fail, right? right? Anything more than failing is plus one for me that is when you start enjoying marketing and that right, is also right. that is also when it gives you appetite to experiment with experiment go more bold, go bold which is very very important because these days everybody can run ads my friend everybody is a marketer in the world yeah mumbai yeah. has 4.5 lakh marketers when you look at digital marketing or marketing in mumbai it has 4.5 lakh people right yeah. how do you cut the fucking clutter by standing out so it's a red ocean right now. Digital marketing is a big uh, red ocean right now. The courses on Udemy and uh, everywhere of digital marketing is the lowest costing course. Like you can't do a law course or an MBBS or an engineering course at that cost. Hence, it is there is less barrier to entry. Hence, there is more and more people who are just taking up the course and thinking I'm a digital marketer, which is yeah, making so more I'll tell you, I'll tell you the biggest problem with digital marketing. Uh, it, this is not a problem with marketing because again, a lot right. of people think Digital marketing is marketing. Digital marketing is barely uh, yeah. any bit of marketing. Uh, it is part of marketing, yes, but there's so much more beyond that. Uh, but the problem is with perception. That is, yeah. when you say, let's say, digital marketing is Facebook ads and Google ads. That's about it. Let's face it, right? Uh, how much of programmatic do brands do these days? How much of other things beyond uh, Facebook and Google brands do not much, 
right? When you're doing something like that, when you have that setup, learning Facebook ads is a five hour course on Udemy or YouTube or wherever that is. Yeah, yeah. Learning yeah. Google ads is five hours. So you're spending 12 hours and you can call, literally, you can actually call yourself a digital marketer because essentially you can run ads. Yeah. Nothing is stopping you from running ads because you can get a creative, get a copy, get some level of fucking, I mean, shitty targeting, beep yeah. that up, uh, <laughs> shitty targeting, and you can just run ads, right? So yeah. barrier to entry, like you said, is extremely low. But the problem is people don't understand the difference between an actual marketer and a, you know, tool snoob, right? Yeah. If just knowing a tool is not going to make you a designer, just knowing how to run ads is not going to make you a marketer, all yeah. right? There's so much, where is persuasion, where is understanding of user, where is persona? Why are you targeting that user? Why is that user not converting? Are you understanding your funnel? Are you breaking your funnel down? Are you looking at, uh, you know, heat maps? Are you looking at user journeys? Now, right. most right. of the users, when you talk about it, they don't know shit about it, right? Yeah. So that is the problem with marketing. When, when something is so easy to enter, when barrier to entry is so low, then problems happen. And that is what is yeah. happening with marketing right now. So before this, right, graphic designing used to be this. Uh, five yeah. years back because graphic right. designing's barrier to entry was the lowest because yeah. four hours of Photoshop course, you can start doing some level of graphics. If you have design sense, right? Abhi wo badal ke graphic, uh, graphic design canvas. Badal ke, yeah, a canvas. So they are saying, canvas. okay, it's not even a skill anymore. Right. Yeah. If you know how to think about design. You can do anything that you want without yeah. going through the program or whatever it is. But marketing has become that thing right now, which is digital marketing specifically has become that thing. Specifically, Absolutely. Facebook ads has become that thing. So, yeah, it will just yeah. keep on. It, it it will keep on increasing. I think I think it's very easy to automate stuff. So, aage chalke, the only thing that remains is creativity, copywriting. How are you thinking? How are you planning, strategizing, and all? Uh, but but since we are talking about since we are talking about campaigns and uh, the issues that we not exactly issues the uh, things you had with your campaigns. How do you deal with the negative criticism on your own personal uh, ads that you run? So for an example, let's say you are running your ads. Now, I'm not talking about spammers who are only there just to bombard you with negative comments. Now, now one thing I understood uh, is when you, start your, when you start your career, ORM is a very, like, very interesting kind of a skill a very, uh, to take judgments. Kis comment ko delete karna hai, kis comment ko reply karna hai, and kis comment ko ignore karna hai. How do you take those judgments? How your mind deal with these honest negative criticisms on your ads? So if I see criticism, right? There's a difference between criticism and there's a difference between internet hate. I'm not talking about hate right. as a broad keyword, internet hate, right? Okay. If it is criticism, somebody says that, Hey man, I didn't like the fact that you use the cuss word on your program. Right. I'm like, I'm sorry. Because I used to be like, if you look at, I mean, I, for people who have joined batch one and batch two, right. I used to be so open. I used to like be frank and would use the cuss <laughs> words and just be open. I'm like, Janta is here to learn. I don't think they care. But right. then after two, after the, I am very rigorous when it comes to feedback, right. I call, I pay people to give me feedback, right. That's how I call, that's how intense when it comes to feedback, at least for the first five batches. Right. So when I did that. There are a few hot spots that, that catches up. Like, listen, I'm a data driven marketer. Everything that I do, I go to the depth of data to understand what is going right, what is going wrong. And when I saw that boss on top line, right on, on a very high level, I knew that people had problem with me using cuss words, cut it down, cut it down. Like next time it's, it was very natural to me, right? right. When I'm speaking, that's how I speak. When I'm passionate about things, that's how I speak. But then the moment I get there, what the, and I stop there. Right. And that, that basic, and to be very frank, right. When it comes to something like this, 90% of the audience enjoyed it saying, okay, this guy is being, uh, you know, as natural as possible. So people like it, but right. the other 10% is a problem. So let's fix it for them. And I fixed it. Right. right. So this is what will enable uh, criticism. Criticism is always good. Criticism makes you better with everything right. that you do. Right. There were people uh, initial days who said that, Hey man, I didn't get the files that you promised. I'm like, boss, I actually emailed you. It's on the spam box and I can't control everything, every inbox. Right. Right. right? right but then right. I decided, you know what? Fuck this shit. Like, let's not do, let's do email as well. And let's do WhatsApp as well. And let's do messenger, messenger push as well. Let, right. Let's, let's right. push it out in every form, every way and form so that we can right. reach out to everybody that reduce. 
interest. And then there are still, you know, no matter what you do, there'll be one to 5% of audience, depending on what you're delivering right now, it is less than 1% for me, uh, for the workshop that I do at LinkedIn, because it's just so unique. But yeah. if I do any other program, there will be much, the, the numbers is going to be much bigger is no matter what you do, you cannot make a few people happy. It's impossible. Yeah. I think, I, I think it's fine. Just to ignore. I think it's fine. Just to ignore. Yeah. In those cases, I don't ignore. I actually refund them saying, please take your money. I'm not ah, here. Interesting. I'm interesting. not here to make your, I'm not becoming rich with your 500 rupees. So take it. Now. That's quite interesting. Like, like no questions asked and just refund or yeah, what? Just, if somebody says that I hated your workshop or if somebody says that, man, what is this? This is not good experience. And all. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. This is not for you. Take your money back. Right. And you can continue to enjoy the workshop. If you interesting, want to. Interesting. Right? Interesting. So we know what people like this. Um, and a lot of times also I'm very, very, very specific about people, uh, about how, about the attitude. Okay. Uh, because if somebody talks to me as if they own me, I'll ask them mm -hmm. to fuck off. I don't consider any of those people as my clients. I make this very clear. If you think right. there's a client relationship, client and, uh, you know, like yeah, what, what is the other side client and service relationship, Cl uh, client agency. Uh, yeah, know. whatever. <laughs> this is not a client based relationship. You're my student. So you better. Right. Give me the respect that I deserve. If you think I'm your, you are my client, then you're wrong. If you have that mindset, please leave the workshop. I don't want right. you. Right. When you have that mindset, because I shout at people. Yeah. I literally shout at people. I, ha I have, I have, I have seen, I have heard those. Things. Yeah. And, and because I genuinely care about people getting results, yeah. whatever yeah. I do, I genuinely care. And when I give my hundred percent and when you don't deliver your hundred percent after you pay for what you, what you, you're, you're paid for this. Right? right. You still don't do it. Then I'm going to shout at you. Deal with it. Right. If you don't like it, you can leave. I think that's a, that, that's a persona. I mean, there is no need to change also. Yeah. But I think majorly, majorly what problem may happen, may happen. I don't know. I may, I, could, I could be wrong is when you have a mixed set of audience, like 18 to 24, they will be okay with shouting. But when you have, let's say in the same group, 25 to 35, who are already at some stage, have an, have a self-esteem and ego. They may think that he, this is not the right because of that age gap or whatever. I'm not shouting maybe. at, I'm not shouting at Sindhu. Huh. I'm shouting at everybody who didn't do the work, who didn't do the work. Right. You get the point. If you specifically pinpoint people, then they'll take offense. Oh, uh, I got your point. I got your point. Right? This is also something that I've learned. Right. right? These Interesting. Are, these are learnings over time. Right. There's so right. much. I mean, the last five months has taught me so much. It's unbelievable, man. Like about how to deal with humans. I mean. Dude, in live chat, I get a comment saying that, oh, this is so much of nonsense, <laughs> right? Okay. And I don't ignore them. I, I highlight those comments and I talk about those comments. I'm like, what's to bata mere ko? Kya problem hai? <laughs> we solve getting it, right? right. I, I don't shy away from uh, uh, criticism. I, if you see, if somebody comments, I usually respond to that, right? I don't right. shy away. If I'm right. wrong, I say, okay, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, right? But if I believe in something, it could not just be content. It could be LinkedIn posts or where, whatever for that matter is. I stand by for a few things and I strongly believe they're the right way of going about it. You could, you could disagree with me. That is absolutely fine. I respect your opinion, but you should right. respect my opinion as well. Right. right. Sure. So, sure. I, th I think that's, that, that's also a good part that I have liked about you, which is, uh, I have seen your pattern of, uh, commenting and how you deal with the deal with the comments, uh, I have not, I was actually trying to find a pattern, to be honest, uh, how, how is there a, is there a pattern persona, which this guy is following or is it so dynamic? The good thing is it's actually super duper dynamic, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, which is, which is actually good. Uh, but, but since we are talking about these, uh, these stuff and the comments and everything, I see that you have tried to use some viral loops in your, in your, uh, in your advertising campaigns and all. What, what is your thought on virality? Like. What do you think makes something go viral in your understanding? See boss, one thing is there viral as a word is overused like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a, it's a loop, man. There is yeah. no point of calling it a viral loop. It's, it's a growth loop in the end, right? You're, you're connecting dots. You're circling the whole process, True. right? Uh, see virality's definition ch changes every time based on uh, how you look at it. What is right. viral for me is probably not viral for you. What is viral yeah. for you is probably not viral for me. It's a perception of people. Right. It's a perception of a brand. So for me, for a person, uh, for a regular person, if he hits 50,000 views on his content piece, he says, Oh, I've gone viral. And it is true, right? For him. But for yeah. me, when my average views is almost 90 K to hundred K on average, for me, viral is hitting 1 million. You get my point. So yeah. virality yeah. is very subjective and it depends on person to person, but what, what triggers a loop 
let's forget about virality. What triggers a loop is is a classic funnel, right? When you're able to tick box every part of the funnel, if, right. if you put it in a very simple way, let's, let's, let's not even talk about A3, Aati, let's talk about awareness, activated activation and referral, right? right? If you talk about three levels, three stages, we can do it right. right. Because for most of the products that we are trying to cater to, awareness is not even a thing anymore, right? Yeah, awareness yeah. is catering more to FMCG, SaaS and things like that. Right? True, so true. You're talking about activation, uh, you're talking about awareness and uh, sorry, acquisition and activation, true. right? Acquisition, let's say in my case is acquiring through ads or organic channels or whatever that is. Activation for me is them attending the first day of the welcome call because I know for a fact if they attend the first day of welcome call, right. I they will can retain. have an 80% retention over the course of time. Right. Because they will go through an experience that they are not. That is the power of activation. I'm activating that audience in my way. Right. And then in the next five days, if you're able to deliver more than what you've promised. I, I keep saying this under promise over deliver under promise over deliver, right? Promise them five things. The problem with most of the brands and most of the companies and ev- anybody selling over products, promise under deliver over promise under ulta hai pura. <laughs> yeah. I will teach you this. Uh-huh. I'll teach you that. I'll teach you this. I'll teach you that. In the end, they're like sub everything. They'll be touch based and they'll be like, okay, pay me 25,000 and I'll teach you everything now. And people are pissed off. Yeah. What is this nonsense? Yeah. Right? Actually, that's what we also do when we when we uh, are like pitching to a company for joining them. HR ko jaake wahi bolte hain ki, bhai sahab, I to ye kar dunga, wo kar dunga. And the first day of the job, you are like, alag level pe. No, that is figuring out, right? Because there the journey is longer. You can actually yeah. figure out, right? To HR ko bol diya ki, I'm kick ass on attribution, right? Yeah. And you don't know shit about attribution, and you know only basics of attribution. The the reason why you said that is because you're confident that once you're into the company, you'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah. You'll figure it out. I'm smart enough to figure it out. Right. So that is different to hmm. hear where people, when they sell, especially when they sell things over promising a next level, mein hota hai, right? Because the intention is to just sell. And Correct. that is what is triggering zero referral for them. People just don't talk about them. If they talk about it, they're either neutral or negative. People right. barely talk positive about it, right? But what I do in my case, in everything that I do is I always under promise and over deliver. That is, right. I say, I'll teach you five things. I teach them 25 things. And they're like, to promise hi nahi ye bhi bol raha. Ye to promise hi nahi ye bhi bol raha. and then when I have to sell something, I will sell that as well after that. So you have taken a user to a level where he's like, fuck, like this guy has delivered more than what he has promised which is not an experience that people go through. That's exactly why people refer even now till to date, right? My most of my programs get almost 35 to 30, like abhi kam hote ja rahe. Like in initially though, it was 50% organic boss. Yeah. 50% of my sales was abhi, 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 why do you think it is, it is going lesser and lesser because of the audience audience is depleting, right? I'm done with 18,500 people. Like (laughs) what is that? (laughs) Yeah, scale- you should make a post on that. Yeah, kya hai? <laughs> 18,000. Why don't you make a discord server? 18,000. Ko leke sab I'm, I'm planning to make one. I'm planning to see that. Th- here's the thing again, right? There's so much to do. There's yeah, so much to do. Creating a discord server is not difficult. Is maintaining, uh-huh. it. maintaining it is damn difficult. And then there'll be a lot of nuisance, a lot of nonsense. Like I need yeah. to hire someone to handle that. But again, right? Nobody in the country will have a 20,000 people paid discord server. Right. True, the quality true, of audience true. is totally different when someone yeah. makes a pay purchase. Right. So yeah, man, like, uh, it's been uh, a lot of learning, a lot of excitement. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that quite, quite interesting. Uh, let's, let's, let's try to, let's try to, uh, hit you on the bit nostalgic nerve, uh, mm-hmm. which is let's, let's talk about when you, when you first started your, uh, like corporate journey or, or your career. Silly mistakes, bahut lo karte like I remember the silly mistake, not exactly silly mistake. Uh, pehle din mein gaya office mein, and uh, mera boss mere ko bolta hai ki, uh, ye laga, what do you say? UTM, UTM track, track, uh, tracking laga ke link mujhe bhej. And I was like, UTM kya hai? <laughs> to, to call hai tujhe, UTM nahi pata sala, hire kyun kiya tere ko? And I was like, googling, achha, archin, tracking, and all that, achha, pura dekho. Uh, even I don't know the full form <laughs> of UTM, by the way. Being very flat. <laughs> Achha, kafi sahi hai tha. or something like that, right? Archin tracking mechanism, I guess. So, so yeah. Who cares actually? And I had no idea ki, achha, ye karta kya hai, but then I came to know, ki, okay, achha, iska application is this. Okay, interesting. 
बट आई है चार हजार का एड चलाने के बजाय चालीस हजार का चलाया हुआ है सो ठीक है योर सिलेबिस्टेक्स यू डेड इन योर फर्स्ट bunch of uh, them yeah. right uh, first is that uh, based on what you said uh, i ran an ad this was my first ad at uber usse pehle i have run ads for brands but it was 1 lakh a month 1 and 1/2 lakh a month of budgets right, right. it was barely anything and uh, uber mein kya hua tha the performance team bhi nahi tha theek hai right. and i said why the hell are we uh, why the hell are we like doing so much of offline and all that we can use performance and my manager was like okay do you know how to do it i was like of course yes <laughs> I mean, I was run lakhs of ads, man. I was like, yeah, right. go ahead and do it. And you won't believe I used my personal credit card to make uh, run ads. What? <laughs> yeah, that's how it started. Funny. Okay. Uh, we didn't even have a pixel integration. Okay. Because for that we had to write to the technical. Um, we had to write to the team at SF, and they will ask us hundred fifty oh. questions. I said, fuck all this. Uh, <laughs> we will track using promo codes. Okay. <laughs> oh shit. Right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so kya kiya i'm like like this was this was like the first two weeks okay uh, what i what we ran was we were running for 10 15 000 rupees a day it was doing extremely well like 30 rupees cost per first trip and 40 rupees which was much more offline obviously much more cheaper than offline right and then this has this was doing great let's scale this up i was like okay cool and i converted that to one and a half lakh a day <laughs> okay <laughs> and it broke and it broke the cost of like, i slept woke up in the morning 1 lakh rupees i mean like uh, not woke up in the morning i slept and like yeah. i saw it like a couple of days back later 3 lakhs or 4 lakhs burnt and cost per acquisition <laughs> had gone up to 850 rupees not even cost per first <laughs> right okay. so learning gali suna learning. gali suna nahi they were like it's okay you learn something kya baat kar rahe you have a great i think advantages of heavily funded startups uh huh. is because I mean, we can cover that up somewhere. Not that we spend thirty lakhs or forty lakhs, right? Yeah, in yeah. In that budget, marketing budget, we can say something. Yeah. Uh, so starting to this to as noob stuff like putting <laughs> the wrong URL for the landing page. I have done that. I have done that. Run ads and you're like, where is the traffic going? Why are there no yeah. conversions? And then yeah. you go back and click the link is only wrong. Yeah. Right? Do sometimes uh, I've also like I've al- always run multi multi national ads for my programs as well. In those cases, sometimes as small as converting uh, the currency to the right currency. So people uh, in okay. US were costing me three dollars a click. Were looking at a price of seven dollars, and obviously it cannot be profitable. <laughs> so personally, also burnt hands. But again, right? These things, these mistakes, everybody has made, and I think True. we should keep making. Yeah. If we don't make a mistake, for example, writing emails, right? How many times have have I misfired emails, right? The email that has to go day after tomorrow, like literally, the program says, "Guys, today is day three. Have you finished the program?" And that video, that that email went on day one. It's like, <laughs> at the day one, it's like, oh, right. sorry, sorry. I mean, I was just trying to get you guys excited. <laughs> <laughs> like I think the most bizarre shit is these. These are still coverable. Push notification shit is the. Like you can't cover. You oh, that's can't that's. Cover. I mean, I've made fuck ups there as well. So I was running re-engagement campaigns, and these were pretty expensive re-engagement campaigns. All right. Okay. So I can see that on your it face. It touches in CRs, right? When you do a campaign and uh, <sighs> extra zero, oh. <laughs> a oh. discount of extra zero. Oh. <laughs> while creating the promo code, while creating the promo code, right? right. And extra zero. I mean. <laughs> Before marketing, like right now, you brand yourself as a growth hacker is uh, is the term that you keep on using. I guess that is the brand positioning that you want to take it ahead. But before that, yeah. uh, I think that I, I think we are from the same hometown, right? I think we are from, from from the same state, but not hometown. I guess I'm from Katak. You're from Orissa. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh from, yeah, I'm from Barampur. Are uh, same same. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so 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 tell me tell me the your first dream. That you thought for a long time that यही मुझे आगे चलके बनना है. Before being a, being a marketer, I'm pretty much sure that uh, like marketing से चालू नहीं होगा dream. Unless and until you are Gary V. It was never marketing. Gary V also is not a marketer by the way. So it. हाँ मतलब he calls himself कि मुझे sales करना था ना I really doubt that जब वो बोलता है कि बचपन से मैं sales sales सोच रहा था I'm like बचपन से. Oh so sales से सोचता नहीं होगा sales sales he must have done things which are. Inclined to sales. Inclined so to that sales. That has yeah. that has happened in my childhood as well. See, I'll tell you, I've been, always been a hustler from a kid, huh. right? Because of strict parents. When you have strict parents, so many things changes. High five on that. Sorry. 
high five on that high five <laughs> yeah yeah so that that has been the case so uh, as a kid uh, i used to i was actually good at sales so i mean i've sold beyblades for 4x the markup price and shit like that so 500 rupees ka beyblade 2000 2500 ko 3000 ko wo bhi baap logon ko bechta tha like not the kid <laughs> the parent used to come and buy because the kid used to cry oh right? <laughs> yeah, i've done i've done stuff like that two stuff which i'm not proud of either where okay. i pursued people so much that they started stealing from my dad's pockets i okay. made a post on this on linkedin where you know what like uh, persuasion like that is where you stop crossing a line right and that i did as a kid and that was a huge lesson so i don't do that anymore i think all those things catches <laughs> up with you right, right. Uh, so to something like that so always sales was always a thing but again i i, I mean sales matlab i never knew the word sales or marketing <laughs> right but as a kid i was very passionate about robotics interesting uh, right from uh, second grade or third grade i used to break all my toys and you know build micro robots or robots matlab kya कार तोड़ के और एक कार बनाया वो जिस कार है ना कार है ना लाइक अ वुडन पीस इंस्टेड ऑफ अ ब्यूटीफुल लुकिंग टॉय राइट एंड दैट वाज दैट वाज कूल बिकॉज़ यू ब्रेक अ यू टेक अ यू टेक अ चिपसेट और अ यू नो द आरसी चिपसेट फ्रॉम अ डिफरेंट रोबोट और अ डिफरेंट कार एंड पुट इट ऑन योर ओन ब्रोकन मशीन एंड यू से दैट डील विद इट आई हैव डन दिस नाउ राइट देन यू टेक इट अ नेक्स्ट स्टेप एंड देन यू बिल्ड अ बोट लाइक व्हिच कैन गो ऑन वाटर and then from there it went to underwater robots and we did i did quite a bit of things with a right. bunch of friends i had in fact by when i was in ninth grade uh, we built our project for a iit kharagpur student who went Can on to work. go to the second position in his robotics robo when workshop. you were at when you were in your ninth grade ninth standard yeah. bhai sahab maine iit ka naam nahi suna tha us time <laughs> i mean iit and all chodo matlab abhi pata hai ki wo iit kharagpur gaya tha all hmm. all that we knew was because i also went to that event Ah, uh, okay. Right. So I was like, "Oh, this is IIT Kharagpur, and you know, like fancy stuff." Okay. Like so I always wanted to become an engineer. Is it because because not because I wanted to like uh, become a marketer, but right. I wanted to become an engineer because robotics is something robotics. that I, it was my first love. Okay. And then by ninth standard, tenth standard, I kind of drifted towards computers because I started. I built my own machine in my ninth grade. because my dad said this is your budget but i wanted a pentium 4 i wanted 512 <laughs> i wanted 160 gb hard drive how will i make that happen by cutting cost down so i said you know what screw it i'm not going to buy a cpu casket only because that will save me 2500 rupees as a result my ram can go from 256 mb to 512 mb so my cardboard ke upar heat sink laga ke right it was a open box that i had i like literally mantled everything together right uh, so i enjoyed doing obviously ek hard disk jala diya ek ram kharab ho gaya wo sab bhi hua but uh, i enjoyed starting doing computers and from there i never did code uh, i never did code at that time but i was doing c c++ and all that in not c++ c and basic and all that in school i see right. students right so computers was also something that was exciting so i thought this is perfect uh, robotics plus computer science is a very good combination mechatronics right sorted okay uh, but i was like okay chalo computer science let's do what we have to do I joined computer science and I, I did I did go to robotic competition I did do everything that I wanted to do in first year and first year I was like done was I, I won I won a few competition IITs and uh, you know like won a few awards and I'm like ho gaya matlab no more fun what is next not that uh, I'm going to build okay. a humanoid not no. really right uh, so done abhi kya karenge that is when uh, you know like i said i started learning photoshop when i was in 10th standard i built my uh, you know designs and graphics and all that in my 10th standard after my board exams so i was like a lot of people used to reach me out saying can you do this design can you do that design i was like sure why not for college communities and all uh-huh. and that's when that's when people from outside also started to reach out can you make a website i'm like ha aata hai mere ko banana paise charge kiye स्टार्टिंग में तो मतलब यू कवर ऑफ द होस्टिंग कॉस्ट एंड ऑल तो उससे पहले क्या होता है स्टार्टेड समथिंग कॉल्ड डिस्कवरिंग एंड्राइड दैट इज व्हेन हाउ दैट इज हाउ आई लर्न हाउ टू मेक अ वेबसाइट आई डिडंट इवन हैव अ लैपटॉप फनी थी राइट सो दैट इज हाउ आई स्टार्टेड टू बिल्ड वेबसाइट दैट वाज यूजिंग अ गो गो डैडी का वेबसाइट बिल्डर बाय द वे ऐसे नहीं है कि कुछ कोड वर्ड डाल दिया कुछ नहीं किया ठीक है बट आफ्टर दैट पीपल स्टार्टेड रीचिंग मी आउट सेइंग ओ मैन द वेबसाइट लुक्स वेरी नाइस इट्स रिस्पोंसिव एंड स्टफ can you make a website for us i'm like of course i can uh, and then i started making a few websites and people liked it uh, i had inherent design sense because i started designing for a very long time and that's when i started crazy heads and then after third second year ke endings hai to it's always been like there was no college anymore there was only startup so uh-huh. we i scaled my business 
up pretty well and uh, <clears throat> It went on for four years, almost three and a half years ish, and then I got bored of it, and then Uber happened, yeah. and then got bored of Uber, then Clue happened, and now Clue left. Oh yeah, now I get back to back to grind. So let's see how that goes. I really want to understand. Yeah, I mean, everyone generally asks me. So anyone who is a who is a friend to me, just come and know. I really try to understand what is your understanding around this fail fast approach. Do you oh. really agree? Or, or if you don't agree, then what is that philosophy that you follow? Five thousand percent. Five thousand percent. You agree? It's better done. It's better better done than perfect. Experiment, experiment fast, fail fast. Absolutely. Like we are not in a world unless you're a very big brand and you can't afford to fail. And trust me, that is no like with the tech, with the data that we have right now, boss, you can run experiments with one percent of your user base, right? And you're okay to fail with that base or zero point zero two percent of your user base when you're such a big company, right? Right. So. experiment fast fail fast is the only way of going forward and that is the only way that is the way of going in the future unless you are an apple where you want to be a perfectionist and i'm sure right. apple does experiments as well right so absolutely and also the fact that better done than perfect is also something that i strongly believe in and it's not just about saying right i literally do it so if you yeah. look at my first batch i didn't even have a lms i didn't have a single email written i didn't know what i will speak on the day of the event i had 500 people enrolled into the program and i didn't know what was day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 i eventually figured it out right so when you are when you know what you have to do uh, just don't try to like you know like perfect it but just go live test it out with your audience test it, get live feedback from audience then having uh, you know assumptions back in your head and just just do it in fact uh i can't share the name but i've already like launched a couple uh, launched my first program of my new startup right it's it's in uh, oh great yeah and uh, we don't have a logo <laughs> there is no logo there is not a single post on the facebook page and instagram page nahi chahiye nahi chahiye and we did 20 lakhs of revenue in 3 weeks what that's great yeah. that's great it just great, doesn't man. matter it just doesn't matter that's what i'm saying 